Hey everybody, welcome back to The Pressing Matters. I'm Scott, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your support. I've been away for almost a month and I'm so glad to be back. I have so much to talk about and we're gonna start today with The Look of Love, Diana Krall. This is a new release in the Verve Acoustic Sound series. Um, I had ordered it from Amazon. It arrived right as I left for vacation and it sat there for the whole month. Um, in my house, of course, but um, the problem was I started hearing reports of a problem with the pressing, either the pressing or the mastering or the tape. And I was like, oh, gee, I'm going to be away for a month. I need to be back in time for the return window or have someone else return it for me if there's a problem. So today I'm going to let you know what I found um, about these reports and if it affected my copy. But first, let's talk about gorgeous. I don't usually use the term gorgeous uh, to describe albums. I try to get into a little more detail than that. But um, look at her. Uh, she's gorgeous on this cover. This is a gorgeous photograph. This is a gorgeous gatefold and a gorgeous production. It really is a beautiful, beautiful record. Um, interestingly, even as an audiophile for over 30 years, this is my first Diana Krall album on vinyl. Most audiophiles have a couple, at least. I have some CDs, and I'm familiar with some of her work. Um, a one that I play a lot is Love Scenes, and uh, I absolutely adore that record. Um, I have it on CD, as I said, and I stream it quite a bit. I, I also have this on CD, and I, you know, I've listened to it a few times in the car. Yeah, I still have a CD player in the car. Um, and uh, never experienced it on vinyl, and I was like, when this came out, I was like, I have to have this. I have to. Well, I was really taken aback with this production. What really struck me is the arrangements, the backing arrangements. Her voice, of course, is very, very lovely, um, as it always is. And um, if you know Diana Krall, you know her particular style of singing. It's very silvery, a little bit whispery, very romantic and gorgeous. Um, the backing sort of stole the show. And I was like, Who, who's doing the arrangements on this? It sounds so classic. And when I looked further into it, I said, oh, it's Klaus Ogerman. I had heard the, I had heard his name before. I had heard that style before. It reminded me of the style of Nelson Riddle, kind of surrounding Frank Sinatra on those classic albums. Um, only the Lonely and others. Um, and the more I looked into it, I said, I have heard his arrangements before on a Billie Holiday album, on a Sinatra album. I looked it up and I was like, this is arranged by Klaus or Ogerman. And I thought, I absolutely adore the arrangements on here. It's the same. He has taken his classic sound and surrounded Diana with the most lush, understated, and elegant backdrop you can imagine. Beautiful, beautiful. The instruments are surrounding her in a, in a classic way, classic yet modern way. But, you know, this cover really evokes everything about this album. Uh, sensuality. Um, she looks very sensual here. Sensuality and beauty. Um, classic. The classic black dress. Um, the contemporary. This uh, contemporary loft. 
with uh, you know the classic modern day bed. Uh, I think it's Mies van der Rohe, and it just evokes everything about this classic beauty, classic beauty, classic sound, um, with a modern edge and interpretations which. I really like. I think the song selection is beautiful. It's wonderful, is of course by Gershwin. Love Letters is on here. I Remember You. Her rendition of this is beautiful, and so is Klaus's arrangements around her. Cry Me a River. It's really hard to top some of the other versions, but she does a great job making that her own as well. Besame Mucho, very, very sexy and sensual, lovely. The Night We Called It A Day, Dancing in the Dark is Beautiful, I Get Along Without You Very Well. The Look of Love um, is really hard to top, uh, Dusty Springfield, of course, but she does a great job with it. It's very, very good. And uh, the last track is Maybe You'll Be There. Now, as I played through this, <coughs> excuse me, I played the first album. It sounds lovely, beautiful, just as I've described. The sound, the pressing, the mastering, everything sounded as it should. When I got to side C, my heart dropped because all the reports I read on Discogs were true. Um, there is a problem somewhere in the production of this record. It's um, sort of a zipping sound. Um, an a spittiness on the on the cymbals that's very pronounced. It's not just a hot mastering, it's something else. Um, I can't believe that, I think it's Bernie Grunman did this one, Bernie or Chad would let this pass unnoticed, at least not with a disclaimer. <clears throat> so I don't think it's in the tape. I, I think um, the test pressings were fine and were approved and that there's something going on beyond this. So perhaps a faulty stamper, some pressing problems. Um, there are a few reports of people that don't have the, the issue at all. Um, hopefully they're listening closely, but really you don't have to listen closely. It happens on, um, but as I said, mostly on side C, the night we called it a day, the beginning of dancing in the dark, and there's a little bit on the fourth side as well. So, there are good ones out there, apparently, but if you're going to order this, and you can order it from my store to get it through Amazon, you'll have a 30-day window to return it if there's an issue. Um, I am returning mine. Now, what they said to me was, <laughs> You know, usually when you return to Amazon, they say, would you like a replacement? Would you like a refund? I've noticed when there's been widespread issues with something, they don't offer you a replacement. <laughs> They're like, we can give you a refund. That's all. And that's what happened. There's an extra question now, too. Usually you say the item was defective. Um, and then there was a second question that came up, and I wasn't quite sure how to answer to get the response that I wanted, but I, I just answered honestly. It said, is the, re is the item open and has it been used? And I said, yes, of course. So they didn't let me um, order another copy, which really is fine because I think this is affecting at least the whole run of copies that my Amazon has. Uh, your Amazon may be different, Acoustic sounds may be different. I'm not saying it's a defective record across the board, but make sure you have a return policy for it. Um, it's a shame. A gorgeous, gorgeous record. Um, hopefully the issue will re be resolved at some point and I will reorder it because I absolutely loved what I heard. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Scott for The Pressing Matters. Have a great day.